Welcome, wise ones, to our chat with Matt, where we discuss the 10 spiritual facts and how they apply to topical and current affairs. Here it is. This is the way the world works. Wake up. Hey. Hello. You're looking how very you? cool. Huh? You know what? I, I, I started out with these on because uh, my daughter's in uh, Florida, so I took her Ray-Bans. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah, honey, these will get plenty of use while you're gone. It's all good. <laughs> so, how are you, my beautiful friend? I'm very good. How are you? I'm superb. I'm superb. What's the latest, greatest? How was your week? My week was good. You were in my psyche this week. You think? You've, you've whittled your way into my mind. Yes. Yeah. That is, well, again, I, I apologize for that on one hand. <laughs> on the other hand, that's kind of the intent here is to drill into the psyche of some people. Yeah. When uh, my Whenever my cell phone cuts out, that's God's way of telling me I'm talking too much. And so this might be the same thing. Just eventually they cut me out. To, that was supposed to be a joke. Pretty good one, huh? I'm cracked with jokes. Yeah, you're a tough audience. I, I, I never get a joke. I get it about half an hour later than everyone else. <laughs> you meant to be proud of Rusty. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wait, now, remember, you're, you're a trained psychotherapist here. I don't know if you want to be making those types of admissions. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's I'm far too serious. That's what it forget, is. Forget your doctor's degree, man. You just blew it all right there. <laughs> so, all right. we live a lucid dream. Constructive versus destructive. Our human body is physical energy. Our conscious soul is spiritual energy. Our con conscious soul will continue thinking after we die, and our human body will hopefully be of value to someone else. One's trash is another's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> after, after human death, our used body becomes a treasure trove, trove of usable parts cherished by those still alive but in need on earth. Life is an illusion. Solids are not solids. They're illusions of solids. Earth itself is an illusion. The combination of gravity and matter give conscious souls the illusion of a planet to which we can navigate our lucid dreams and to the greater extent control them. So I think what's happened what's evolved over time is that fact number four uh we're a conscious soul and fact number five we live a lucid dream they've become merged and rearranged because again last time we we touched on some of this didn't we that um re reality is not solid basically we touched on that right. last time the thing I love about these two facts, and yes, you're correct, it's mixed up, okay? The yeah. priorities are backwards. We're concerned about this human life and we should be concerned about our spiritual realities. Yeah. You're saying it's backed up, right? Yeah. I mean, it's upside down on planet Earth. Our priorities are backwards. Yeah. Right. And the thing I like about these last two facts, talking about the conscious soul and the lucid dream, is uh, we get we get that through religion. I mean, everybody's saying, hey, listen, you've got your human life and you've got your spiritual life. So the, yeah. the, the premise that there's two things going on is super common sense. Yeah. Okay. But where I believe these facts are different is they, they really entwine and embed the physics part of it that has to go with. That says, not only is there a spiritual aspect to your life, but it's proven how that spirit or ghost navigates the energy of this world. Okay. Energy's all pulled together through gravity and matter. And it's this little molecular dance that your mind sees as a chair and a table. Okay. So that's the importance of the facts is to get their mind in that concept that says, not only do I agree that there's a physical and spiritual part of my life, but I clearly understand how this thing's put together. It makes sense now. I get it. So they're supposed to be targeted to open the mind that says this shit's common sense, man. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's obvious to anybody with any kind of thought that we we create our own realities to some degree. Right. Like even if you're hardcore materialist and you don't have any truck with 
with the spiritual, it's obvious, isn't it? Because we can focus on the problem, what's wrong. We can be negative. We can focus on the shit that surrounds us. We can focus on the things we think we lack, or we can focus on what's beautiful, what's working, what we're grateful for. And depending on what, what side of the fence you put your focus, then you'll feel very differently. And your and therefore your reality becomes different. Even Amen, if men, yeah. sister. Amen. Yeah. And that can happen on a dime. Yeah. It can happen a nanosecond from right now in anybody's life. You have volition. It just can't be denied. I could be handcuffed right now and in a cell. I got the chance to escape. <laughs> However difficult that might be, you know, so you're, you're 100% accurate. And so again, make it common sense. Let's move forward. Yeah. Stop accepting and allowing the convolution of uh, arguments to the contrary that just aren't substantiated. That's garbage. At some point you got to say, dude, you've been proven wrong. And that's the intent of these steps is to leave those people steps below. We get it. You disagree. That's fine. The rest of us have moved on. And that's why we're on four or five, which is perfect. Yeah. So what do you think about um, the, the idea of manifestation? The idea that um, if we, we can create what we desire or Absolutely. As, as written in the book, The Secret and that whole thing. Well, it's 100% proven. It's 100% proven. I mean, there's a band. Show, tell me, some, let, let, let's, man, let's give me an example. I'll give you an example manifestation. Okay. Um, I would like to see uh, uh, Joe Biden have to go through the top 10 facts. Okay. All right. What can stop me from doing that? No matter what the obstacle is, can I not ultimately get to the guy if I want to? Of course. By any means, you know, you, yeah, you can manifest anything. Absolutely. I mean, w w w give me something I can't. You want me to learn to play the guitar? I'll learn it. Of course. Anything you want. If I, I mean, this is why I'm kind of enamored with my local heroes here. I make sure I go, hey, I want to be part of your world. That's manifestation. Of course. I mean, so, like, the, only, the only way you cannot manifest possibly is if 100% of your freedom has been taken. You're sitting in a cell. Even there, you could write, a, you could write the best book ever written in the world, sitting in a jail cell. That's why I see it, right? You get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's common sense. I mean, a lot of people maybe don't see it that way, but they should. Okay, so my, my view is entirely that. So, um, but I think that's got misunderstood by a lot of people in the sense that you can't wish things into being, you can't hope things into being. The way I think it works is that you, you put something out, my, my language, maybe not yours, but you put something out to the universe. So you put this desire or this intention or this focus out to the universe and you say, right, this is what I want to happen in my life. And then my idea is that I'm then open to all possible opportunities that might come my way, conversations, meetings, whatever it might be, that leads me further in the direction of that goal. And so it isn't a passive, it's not a passive wishing for something to happen. It's, it's, like, um, it's like a contract with the universe. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, though, is once you've established that contract, like, again, your, your important distinction there is, is it passive? Can I just imagine it and it will unfold, which some theories say yes, if you keep imagining it long enough. Yeah. But truth be told, your imagining it in your mind causes your human body to start taking steps to achieve it. Yeah, that's what I think. You no, know, you see it, and you go, I want that. So all of a sudden, the manifestation, I could just sit there and pray that car is going to show up in my driveway one day. But truth be told, obvious manifestation, it requires the arms and legs and speaking and that type of stuff, too. It can't just be the thought. But the thought is what's going to drive you. Of course, you, who writes a book? Somebody gets a thought. I got to do something about this. Next thing you know, you wrote a book. When you never intended to when you were younger. 
Yeah. So your manifestation is absolutely 100% certain. Anybody, now again, you, uh, there's a, one of my favorite nephew always has this problem with, uh, hey, you can do anything you want to, just put your mind to it. And he's like, no, I can't. I, I, I'm five foot one, I do not get to play in the NBA. Yeah. Okay, so within reason. Yeah. But to say at my age, I want to manifest, I want to join, get, make it to the PGA Tour. If I really, really wanted it, I'd hang up right now and I'd go to the driving range. And yeah, so yeah, I'm with you, right? You get it. I mean, manifestation, absolutely. The manifestation happens in your mind and that causes your physical body to go chasing these things. And yeah. if it's important to you, like let's say I really wanted to get the 10 facts in front of Oprah Winfrey, I just put a tent right outside her palace camp out with my little sign and say let me in eventually she has to right that's manifestation i would never do that i'm joking it's an example but i, I you can manifest anything if it matters so i i i'm in total agreement with that and i i absolutely believe that but what would we say to somebody who who doesn't believe that so there's someone close to me in my field and we're always having this discussion um, on a financial level. So I, I believe that there will always be enough. Sometimes I'd like more than enough, but I absolutely believe that there, there will always be enough. And there, and there has always been enough. Even when you're talking, you're talking money, 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 money for it, each it, individual person or for you individually, for, for me, for me and my life and, and my commitments. And um, even when it gets a bit hairy and I think, oh, my God, it, it always works out. Well, so you're lucky that this little threshold called satisfied is lower than some people. Some people will never be satisfied. And I see it like you do again. But I have I have my circumstances are better than they've ever been even though they're moderate yeah 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 me, you know, go ahead please but, but what do you what what would you say to somebody who says well i believe that works for you but that's not my experience and I, and i'm being realistic and factual and i've only got so much money and that's it so what so how could we convince this person that manifestation is a thing well, I the first I ask him to why why do you see it that way? What justification do you have? What what causes you to believe that you can't do something about your circumstances? Anybody yeah. can, you know. So I just ask them. You know, eventually they're going to tie themselves in a knot because they're full of shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of course you can manifest. That's that you know you, you either fight that fight or you go hey listen man to each their own. You sit there and punch yourself in the face. I'm going to move on. <laughs> But that is that is the passive victim not taking charge of my life position isn't it that the, the, the kind of life happens to me and I, but i've tried and and i can't and yeah listen we, we you're gonna get it i mean i still get it i still do it it's just a matter of this like for example let's say we're super super busy and a bunch of people have a, i had a bunch of things to do Okay, like today, I, of course, well, I'm like anybody, I got a million things I could get done today and probably should. Yeah. Okay. And so do you and so does everybody. Yeah. But there's people in the world that that's all we hear is their line of shit they have to do. I don't open up my mind, my mouth and go, I got to drop my car off for the oil. I'm picking up Luke. I'm going to the earth. I don't tell them what I got going, but they want me to know that theirs is troublesome. Yeah. And so this is where I'm not a therapist. You know, I don't go, oh, yeah, you know, I know you need somebody to talk to because you want to get this off your shoulder. I say, dude, dude, cry me a freaking river. Are you nuts? Good God. 99.9% .9 of the people on this planet would trade places for the plight you're bitching about. They'd be happy in your shoes and yet you found reason that it was unfair to you hey dude walk a mile in my shoes all right yeah i don't have any time or patience for it at all we all have even kim kardashian wakes up and there's a shitload of stuff that's giving her anxiety yeah none of us just have that peace well maybe i mean again if i had that kind of money I wouldn't have a care in the world. I wouldn't take on more.
You know, like for example, let's say I'm complaining about everything I have to do. Is there not a case that I should take on less? Yeah. Instead of bitching about it? Right. Yeah. yeah. So take on less. You should be able to navigate this planet, again, under certain circumstances, certainly here in America where people are so-called free. And every moment should be a beach. It's you decide. Each given moment, again, we all have obligations, but we also don't have those types of obligations, whether they're whatever bind we're in, there we'll still have tomorrow. Saying on the subject of finances, you just said, if you had the money of Kim Kardashian, that would be an end of anxiety. But would it? It would what? It would what? That would be it. That would be the end of your anxieties. Well, of course. I mean, I don't have anxiety and I have no money. <laughs> yeah. Can't imagine having anxiety with it. But that's my point because, we, you know, so many people fall into that trap because what we're, what we're saying is you're, you're, we're too focused on materialism and let's, let's stay with finances and money for a minute. So many okay. people fall into that trap that if only I had money, X, Y, Z would be solved. But it's not about money, is it? Money is just a, a representative of something. It's, it's an energy. So either you're asking, I want more choice or I want more freedom. Um, or I, or I, I want to live somewhere else. It's not. It isn't the money, is it? It's otherwise you just stockpile. It's it's what you believe that money will breathe the doorway to, isn't it? Uh, yes. But no, there, there's money. The, actually, the third book was the battle for the money. Okay. Okay. When, when I, my original intent with this, and it's it's a big variable in the world. The world, it, it's our currency. Okay, with money comes power, with money comes freedom. You yeah. can buy these things because you have, and the problem with the money is the way the supply is handled. Again, the banks, there's billionaire human beings through banks and banks are supposedly our own money lending to each other. Yeah. So when it comes to money, you have to reach a certain threshold. Now, yes, there's a scenario in my life where I was rolling in Benjamins and yes, I always wanted to make more but i uh um I, I i guess it's never been the first thing but anyways once once you're making money it's fun yeah i want to make more money i mean I, again it wasn't that i was was obsessed with it but it sure was fun you know so but yes you can be have like for example let's say you're a, a family here in here and, and let's say you got a home that's worth three hundred thousand dollars and and you're, you're everything's cool uh, but you feel like you're completely out of money, okay? But you really have like equity in your home. In other words, yeah. you have money, but you live check to check. And that living check to check is not fun. That problem does supersede all over all others when you're in it. Yes, of course it's it does. It's a pain in the ass being out of money. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. Now, there are people that have plenty of money and still feel like they don't have enough. They're going through the same anxiety that the people who are truly broke are going through. That's crazy, but it's calm, like you say. It becomes, but no question about it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, again, in, in, as a human, here I'm elaborating again, but as a human being, we bust ass. I mean, your typical human being, I mean, day is work all day long, not, nothing, okay? And so when you do that, you are deserving of certain things. Mm -hmm. And so the premise that says, I, in my world, work and I enjoy a nice car, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Now, if you get in a scenario where you need five or six of them to be happy, you got a little problem. But there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my, my, my volition and through that, I'm going to find something I enjoy where I can make money. And as I'm making money, I'm going to compile it. I'm going to put a pool in. Fuck yeah, that's what freedom should be on this planet. Absolutely. I went way off the deep end on that one and I apologize. No, that's good. So what uh, what do you think about a possible agenda of the globalist being to keep us to keep most of us impoverished really? They could turn it around tomorrow. Of mm -hmm. course. Again, poverty throughout the world. I mean, food doesn't reach people because of corruption. Okay, the problem is in the globalist scenario is they're all shysters okay the reason we can't 
have a uh, one world government, which we would never, ever, ever want, <laughs> unless it was 100% democracy down through the countries, to the states, to the cities, to the towns, to the neighborhoods, you don't want no. central control. So these people who control the planet um, are all demonic. If they were good people, everything would be solved tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. People in power have no intentions. And even if they had the intentions to do so, let's say Rothschild wakes up, has a change of heart, says, I'm dropping interest rates because I want to go to hell. All of the people around him will resist. Yeah. It's embedded. Yeah. So how do you beat it? I think through wisdom. One at a time, have fun pounding on this guy. Unless Rothschild lets me in, I have free speech and I'm going to start beating on the guy. <laughs> hey, yo, geezers, time to open up your purse and start sharing the funds, dude. Let's go right to him. That's called manifestation. So to, so to make... to make track again. No, no, you're not. But so to make, okay. to make that more um, grounded and current, I don't know what it's like over there. But our fuel bills, so our gas and, el and electricity, um, are, are, have gone way, way up. They've doubled, basically. And in October, they're going to double again or they're going to go up significantly again. So my last bill for my gas and electric for this quite... Um, so we're, we're, we're in, we've been in spring and summer, so obviously you haven't used your heating and all of that so much. Um, it was a phenomenal amount. And so I'm thinking, OK, so when winter comes, there is no way I can pay double that. It's just not going to happen. And how and, did you just... And, oh, and, I'm sorry. And I have a relatively reasonably comfortable financial life. So if I'm feeling that, then there are millions and millions of people in this country that that feel more feel that more than i do so so how can that be certain things should be our right shouldn't they you know food heat shelter should be our our right no matter what uh, just by being human so what do you think about that well number one i think we're we're again discussing the problem okay i mean over here gas prices went up as high as five dollars a gallon now they're down to 425. And the narrative, the narrative from the deep state is we should be satisfied. They're not $5 anymore. Look what yeah. we've done. Okay. So they doubled in price since Trump. Okay. And again, I use the name Trump to talk about an ideology. Yeah. When, when that human being went into the government, and he released restrictions, he rolled back regulations, our economy exploded, which is what everybody knew would happen. When you, when you leave the money in the private sector, it explodes. End of discussion. Now, there's people who will lie to convolute that truth, but we're above that, okay? Trump caused an economic explosion. And that explosion of economic prosperity was more dangerous to the globalists than anything they had ever seen. And it needed to be stopped. And we watched them stop it. It took it two years. Okay. We watched all that happen. That is not a lunatic. That's common fucking sense. I watched it unfold. There was this human being that was for the people, like a founding father. OK, the uh, and that human being said, government, we need to drain the swamp. Do you know what those words mean? Government's corrupt. These are the people that are causing the problem. Drain the swamp. Couldn't be more true. You saw what they did to the guy. They threw him out of the bar, kicked him in the ass and said, you're gone. All of the globalists. Trust me, it wasn't the American Democrat Party. It wasn't the never Trumpers in the Republican Party. It was the entire world that recognized if this guy succeeds, we are toast. 
He was a, he was, yes. And he's not gone. And he, what he represents, you're going to, now this video is going to get banned because I'm going to say this. Okay. But make no mistake, make no mistake. What they're calling the January 6th insurrection was no different. The true term for that was the 21st century American Tea Party. That's what happened. These guys went to the Capitol and said, we're fucking done with it. And it was peaceful. And whatever shenanigans they're playing, it's orchestrated. They're full of shit. They, the difference is the Tea Party against you bully British, you know, when we started throwing your tea overboard because you were trying to tax the hell of us. You remember that, right? You're, all your relatives are guilty of that. <laughs> Anyways, that's what just happened in America. We tried to dump over the tea. Guess what happened to the people who tried to dump the tea? They're all in jail. Trust me, it's a battle. And everything I'm saying can be proved to anybody willing to think, 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 think. Now, that got a little off the topic of we will die. But we will still die. But we better die having gone down fighting for this thing. And I'm your Huckleberry. Come yeah, on. and and so I. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right, talk to me. I'm sorry. Did I get a little passionate there? I think I showed my true colors. Damn. <laughs> so I agree with you that that it does nobody any good to sit around focusing on the problem. But if you're in your house in the middle of winter and you're freezing your ass off, it's pretty hard not to be focused on the fucking problem, isn't it? Well, you're focused on the problem. Now give me the solution. So what is the solution? How, how am I going to heat my house in winter? How am I going to do that? I, you're not alone. How are we going to turn it around? How is the apparatus going to figure this shit out before we all go broke? Mm. I fly, fly, fly dollars a gallon. That's an extra 50 bucks every time some local guy is filling up his truck. Yeah. That's massive amounts of dollars leaving our local economy and going somewhere. Yeah. How is the apparatus, the status quo ever going to figure it out? They aren't. They don't have a clue. They need help. And how do we help them? But as we, we, as we them accountable. <laughs> well, yeah, but as we said we before... As, as we said before, the demons are winning, aren't they? Because, you know, they don't want you traveling. That's why fuel is so expensive. They want you impoverished. You know, it's, it's the meme going around, isn't right, it? Right. You will own nothing and be happy. They want you sat at home, working from home. So living why in a smart are city. these people still in party? They're still in power. I Everything don't fucking know. About, these people don't care. No, they don't. But okay, I have a theory that says if enough people we can take down this path then these people will see again they, 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 it's i've been hard on my family with this whole thing to this whole explaining my vision for this manifestation and it makes no sense until it actually happens but that's why i have a smirk on my face because every single problem that you're talking about there is no answer at all there's nothing to stop these fools from taking this entire planet into the abyss. It can't be stopped because the apparatus itself is corrupt. Yeah. Okay. So I see no way of stopping this other than truth. It's just getting it one person at a time, starting with my neighbor, that type of thing. So we'll see. I don't want to talk about the manifestation of it. All I love is that it's being documented right now with you and I before any of this has happened. Because I'm either going to, uh, you know, a few months from now be exposed as a total fool or be uh, recognized as somebody who, who was on to something that actually could make a difference. Yeah. So we'll see. This is why I don't care about the book. I want to get in the market and test it. And that's where I've been so hard on you. And that is not your obligation to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's change tack a bit um, and go into some other dimensions. So we live a lucid dream. Wait, well, let me put on my thinkers. Okay, well, what about, literally, what about our dreams? What, what about our dreaming state and our consciousness when we're in the dreaming state? 
do you do you think there's a whole nother land dimension life that we're living in our dream state what what do you think about that uh what do you mean uh explain it again so you're saying in our dream literally state, when, when you when you go often, when you when you go to sleep and dream oh oh dream do you, do you value the dream in life do i yes no you don't but it's, uh, well it's different for each person it's completely different because some people's dreams are super vivid and yeah. absolutely it's your mind communicating with whatever it's communicating is real no question about it in my case my dreams are so i don't have them. and even when i do that they leave my memory right away so they, they don't play a significant role but do i believe dreams say all i know is your mind is not completely asleep and whatever it's communicating with you're still plugged into the apparatus of love yeah so whatever that dream is it's got meaning it's a previous whatever it might be but it, it has to be completely unique experience to each individual like in my case they're insignificant in my life because i just haven't had any of that matter but other yeah. people have had real my, my daughter sees her friend I, I recently paid, yeah so no i i attribute I, I, i'm actually somewhat surprised that we don't know more about it but we probably do i just haven't listened to what they're saying so yes the dream is problem why wouldn't you research that it's it's this consciousness at rest but the brain's still working and it's going into these different realms probably and doing some exploring so i think if you don't pay attention to your dreams you're missing a whole information source directly from your unconscious and also it makes me think of your point that you said um that when you have this brain this human brain that actually limits your awareness to some degree so you said that um when you were saying you're a conscious soul your soul was alive and intelligent before you were born and will be uh, after you die and this this human brain kind of restricts that knowledge in some way well not in some way and again i got that wisdom from dr even alexander yeah proof of heaven okay yeah. a world around neurosurgeons tell me listen here's what's happening you guys have figured it out when they put this thing on us we can't remember shit yeah it's the opposite you know all these people are saying that it's our brain that's creating the illusion he goes that's not it the illusions there your brain is is limiting you our brain if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum yeah okay we, we see white light right yeah yeah that's a, a smidgen Tiny. of the energy that's transforming so our brains what did that so that's that again i don't know who came up with it first but in my world when i read it or when i understood it with certainty and i was done listening to babble regardless is when i read his book and i go the guy's right he yeah. floated through it all he told us all about it guy's got no reason to lie and he's brilliant in terms of being able to remember and capture the trip fucking awesome good stuff so that's why yeah. i that's why i think that um dreams are so important because you it's the doorway to your unconscious it's the doorway to to that wisdom that's not restricted by your normal thinking mind well i would agree 100 it's got to be something in a doorway out of the brain back into what was already understood and makes complete sense all i know is that doorway's been nothing but confusing for me i haven't learned anything from it you know some people do but i, I it doesn't take me anywhere when i sleep so i when don't learn anything more than i would have had i been daydreaming okay so when when you when you because i love this phrase of of this this um fact our lucid we live in a lucid dream but if we if we take that literally have you ever had a lucid dream you say you, your dreams are vague you forget them quite quickly but if you have ever had a dream where in it you know you're dreaming and you can start to control what yes goes have you yes once or twice very Fantastic. rare yeah but the thing is is when i did it too it was exhilarating yeah it was it was like almost um in not in sexual sense but almost because i remember going oh my god this is so cool i can freaking it was it was a cool and and again what that cool was in that one where i knew i was dreaming and i was in control so there was really something exhilarating but now that is not uh uh, uh virtual reality is not far from that yeah you just can 
go anywhere you want. And, uh, but yes, I think that's in now, you know more about it. So in studies of dreams, like again, this whole premise that says we need to go back and understand who we are before we die as a human being. Okay, the question has to be asked, why do we care? If we volunteered to forget that shit, why is it so important that we remember? Okay, fair enough. And I think the pursuit of that is to help people find peace. Yeah. Otherwise, they don't give a shit about it. Yeah. I mean, people that have peace don't care about where they were. They're not even thinking about it. So these people that feel that answer is what leads to, they need that answer to get peace. I believe are seeing it incorrectly that you can have peace without the answer. You got your own volition. I mean, you know what I mean? Um, so again, we might've gotten off track, but, but again, you, you don't have to have those answers. It'd be fun. I don't know. Do I want right now, if I were to sit, you know, and you know what they're doing with mushrooms and these types of things, the mm -hmm. plants and, yeah, these journeys are real. These people are scientists studying what happens when I take my mind using a, a plant hallucinogenic. Where do I go? What world do I enter? That's yeah. all crucially good stuff. Yeah, I think. I mean, I do. I don't want to have it cost billions of dollars for 600 professors to get gravy chain checks to study it. <laughs> I don't know if we have to employ hundreds of thousands of deep state people to study it, but it's crucially important. Let's go, let's see where it goes. And now again, you talked about this in number three, where these people, everything's a fabric of love, right? We get that, people have been there, they get that. Wow, when I go there, these spiritual teachers, I saw some good ones are saying, listen, it's all love. So we're all pointing toward the same thing, right? We get that, that we can go into that frequency of love and that's what makes, that's the fabric of the universe. Okay, so that needs to be common sense. Did anybody go into that love if they need to? Trust these people that say it's about love. Trust the one that did the mushrooms that said, I went into this frequency of love and I learned and everything. You know, it's all about love. That's the fabric of, of, of creation is love. They all go here. They come back and they say it, but the people who need to hear it don't listen to them. No, well, you get it. They're 100% accurate. That's all real, right? Do I mean, do you question it? I think what you've just said about psychedelics, ayahuasca, stuff like that, I think that that absolutely proves your point, that this is just a lucid dream. This is just one dimension and one way of existing. And it had, and this dimension has its laws, its physical laws. Yes. But people that have done ayahuasca ceremonies, as is very popular now, they all, so many of them seem to meet the same entities. For instance, this this serpent type um snake goddess so if if so many people are meeting this same creature this same being then um so, something's going on there isn't it i think so it's, it's something i certainly there. would gravitate toward that being true until i've heard differently or something yeah. to prove it wrong i wouldn't question it at the outset i'd go of course so let's learn about it. what is it why is there consistencies why is there corroboration what the hell is it instead of denying it going, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, so yeah the, i would be, be see that's to me the leaves of understanding we all agree i mean eventually the great awakening in my opinion is we all agree it's a fabric of love we have volition we're spirits like the facts if we can get the world to see it that way then we can go what is this thing that's happening to you we can have an honest conversation with that person instead of the 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 Again, the world is ruled by, by people whose their only agenda is themselves. I mean, they're caught in the mess. They're the spearhead of the mess. But either way, these guys are all trapped and, and they're going to take the whole planet down the shitter. <laughs> but I think, it's, I think it's even more sinister than that. Because if, you, if we stay with the idea of psychedelics for, for a minute, mm -hmm. um, I know cannabis now is legal in lots of states in America. It isn't legal yet over here. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I think they don't, don't, don't you think that's why these things are made illegal? Because they don't want us to enter those other dimensions. <laughs> more, than this. more so than that, yes. You, it's called the dumbing down. Yeah. The last thing these people want us to realize is what Dr. Even Alexander had to say. That's it. 
They don't want yeah. that. Why would they? They're, they <clears throat> realize life is an illusion, right? It's all an illusion. Who controls the illusion? They do. They do. How do we, what is our only chance of getting control of the illusion back? Maybe everybody should do mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> Once in their life. Oh my God. There, now you've found your calling. You want to talk about manifestation. You're going to create the world's first worldwide uh, Woodstock. Well, actually, I, I've been researching because over here, there's a, there's a couple of studies at the moment studying the effects of mushrooms, um, LSD, etc., on certain mental health uh, presentations. And I'm very interested in it. And I'm considering doing some training in that. Hey, if you want to get a study of the effects of mushrooms on the mentally ill, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just call my college roommates. Yeah. Seriously, they're all perfect candidates. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. Oh, you've got Kidding. That was a good joke, wasn't it? Uh, so, yeah, so that type of study, absolutely, okay, um, yeah, and you're intrigued by it. I, I see, here's the, the big difference now is, in my humble opinion, is when I was introduced to the trace, the trace amount, the trace amount, okay, like with marijuana, okay, instead of giving you a joint that's going to get you obliviated, I'm going to limit that amount to 3%. Oh, you mean the microdosing? Yes, microdosing. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yes. Okay, microdosing has exposed the drug war. Yeah. Big time. Here's why. Uh, it's, yes, they, they don't care if we hurt each other, but more importantly, it's the money. It's the money. Think of the drug war. I mean, it's all the cartels, all these things. And to put the cartels out of business tomorrow, means I can get my heroin, my meth, my pot, my alcohol, my caffeine, my nicotine, all in little traces for free. I don't need your heroin anymore because I can take it in a trace that won't kill me and I can't even OD on it. Now I can go out and buy heroin and shoot it if I want to take the risk, but heroin is available to me if I want it in a trace. That when I recognized the Delta 8 for the first time, somebody giving me THC or what be it in a trace mm -hmm. where I can be, you could hit the thing. It's like a, if you don't smoke cigarettes and you smoke a cigarette, the nicotine is going to make you all dizzy for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what happens, except you get high. Mm -hmm. So you literally could smoke one of these things, go mow the lawn, and now you're sober. Mm -hmm. Anyways. The point I'm making is that opened up my eyes. I'm an observer guy. I'm a logic guy. And I go, holy shit. Not, obviously, the drug war was ridiculous. But now that they have laid it out in traces, any pharmacy, anywhere, go in. Hey, you want, give me crack. Can I get a 1% of crack? See if that's the buzz I want. And then I, I don't want it, I don't do it. Now, everything's addicting. So this concept that says, hey, you're putting all these drugs out there that are addicting and people won't be able to stop them. Hey, stupid fucker, everything's addicting. Food's addicting, booze is addicting, sex is addicting. Okay, so stop with the addiction thing. We get it. We can overdo it. We don't need your nanny. We got this. So you ready? Take the fight to the streets. So it's just education. Let's fucking expose them. If I can get the Delta, give me all, every single, until you see kids are, I'm watching the news and it, kids are, they have uh, ring doorbells of kids showing up with guns and stealing things and all the shit. And, and, and they're happy to put these, let's catch them. Let's put them in jail, these kids that showed up with this gun, that's doing all these crimes. They're happy to go catch these guys and put them in jail. Why are they committing the fucking crimes? The banks have all the money. It costs $5 for a fucking gallon of gas. That's why they're causing the crimes. These are good kids getting thrown in because of the circumstances created by a bunch of fucking demons. Yeah. Boom. yeah and, and, and what gets me is, is the hypocrisy of it. So in Silicon Valley, Valley they're all doing microdosing. With, with, so, with, 
with psychedelics because it makes you you, you can really tap into that creative stream Shit, yes you know Shit, and yes. so why are you allowed to do it and i'm not because they're fucking corrupt mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, again, anytime, this is where, again, when we talk about Silicon Valley, we talk about gas prices, or we talk about Biden, or what, I'm so done with the problem part. Mm. It's so ridiculous. I just want to have conversations in terms of what to do about it. And right now, I don't believe there's anything that can be done except education. Yeah. <laughs> except truth. No, I agree. I do agree. So, yeah, so on this slide, I'm going to turn my AC back on. Can you see the sweat coming on my face? I cannot. I'm sacrificing for you so I can hear you. So I'm sweating. Whew. <laughs> Not good. Damn. All what's right, we the got it. What's the temperature there then? Well, uh, it's only in the 80s, but the thing is, is it's 10 o'clock in the morning here. And this office sits right with big south side windows like this. If I were to open the shade. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> early morning. I mean, morning with the big bacon sun coming straight in. Otherwise, it's, it's typically cool. It's just, okay. I, I think it's the least I can do for you. So uh, what, I, I, what I could do is probably buy a microphone and headphones like I'm supposed to. Yeah. If I can hear you. All right. My bad. So, so um, on the subject of temperature, we've had two days over here that have been 35, 36, 38 degrees, right? No doubt. And, and oh my God, has that fed their bloody climate change bollocks. Every, you know, oh dear, oh, are we going to go to work today? And oh, and you know, all the water sold out of the shelves. Two days, it's been two days. And today has clouded over again. The sun's just coming out now. But it's two days of heat and it's like, that just feeds into their narrative of, oh, you know, the planet's going to fry and it's the end of the world. It's apocalyptic. Just makes okay. me so mad. So, so now, again, you've known all of this wisdom prior to this, but now the fact that you've glanced ahead at the rest of them, the rest of the facts, when we start talking about ignorance and evil and those types of things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you realize now you can see with the wisdom, again, you've had this before, but just that little bit of wisdom when somebody opens their mouth about climate change or whatever are you not so where you're smirking at their stupidity because you know they're wrong yeah do not get that the smirk in the uh that says if i could whoever's babbling on if i was in the room with them and just ask them you know what i mean I, the, the, it's not only educate, the thing I'm excited to try here soon is not the education of people. It's the accountability. I want to put them in front of somebody that's guilty. Yeah, no, I agree. agree. Okay. I want to see their reaction to it and, uh, to where they're going, what, what do you think of that? And then again. I, I'm talking about the future, what I want to see, which is absolutely ridiculous. We'll see it soon enough. So in my promise, those types of conversations, I can't get involved with them. I can't talk to people that feel that way. I just walk away from it because I believe they're a wealth. I just believe they're all willfully ignorant and they're lost and they're a danger to my freedom. So I love them. I'll party with them. I'll buy them beers, all that good shit. But truth be told, I'm going to stop them. I'm going to expose them. I have to. We have to. Returning, and that's the fun part <laughs> returning to um everything is about love and the frequency of love and eben alexander wasn't it he, wasn't it his journey where he did go through this horrible really negative part it, it, everything was i forget how he describes it like he was an earthworm through some really wretched landscape and he so he went through at hell in a way before he he entered the world the realm of love etc absolutely it yeah. was an incredible incredible journey yeah and an even more incredible documentation of that journey yeah no question about it it was absolutely freaking brilliant changed my life because it's just information that's accurate yeah it's accurate so, yeah, so there's a journey through it. Now, again, in the book, I talk a little bit about, you know what dark matter is? Yeah. Dark, right. So the, the universe should be expanding faster. So there's dark matter. 
when you look at a near-death experience, next destination experience, uh, they have a tunnel. Yeah, in Dr. Even Alexander's book, the tunnel is palatable. It's touchable. You can smell it. It's a stench. It's death. You can feel the fear. And the premise of that, our earth is in the dark, dark matter. And that's what we're tunneling through is hell. Earth is in hell. That's we're tunneling through that shit to get through to the light. And that's why earth is in the situation it's in. It's in a cesspool called, we're, you know, we're on the frequencies of darkness. We're down there. And so that near-death experience could be, yes, it's around the planet in just a different frequency. It's stinky, gross, freaking death. And we need to go through it to get out of this place. It doesn't surprise me at all. It strikes me as common sense. Same, no. give, me, give me an argument to the contrary. Most people that... Uh, that Ha, um, maybe meditators or have spiritual experiences or a psychic will say that coming back to this plane it's more dense and the vibration is is slower and I've certainly had that experience myself when when my consciousness has, has expanded into other states of being coming back really does feel like that that it's it's much more dense here Absolutely. I would think that's the effect of a, a spirit, a conscious soul being wrapped into gravity. Boom. What the hell happened to me? I'm stuck. Okay. And yes. So now that's another thing that Dr. Eben Alexander pointed out that resonated with me was the difference in frequencies. He yes. was saying that there's frequencies below, which doesn't surprise me. The dark frequencies of fear are the first ones you're going to enter. That's why we have conscious souls or ghosts that are, are pissed their life is over. They're staying in those dark frequencies because they want another shot. Whatever their reasoning is, that makes complete sense. It explains ghosts, it explains mediums, it explains the ability to communicate with it. 100% true. Then Dr. Eben Alexander, too, recognized that there's frequencies of which he cannot go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, higher growth spirits. So my guess is those spirits that are in those higher frequencies have figured out that to switch frequencies, it means doing it through giving and not selfishness or what be it. So uh, bottom line is, is with a question, he, he made it crystal clear that it's, it's frequencies. I, again, I like to go back to Nikki Six because she likes to think of it as an onion. Yeah. Inside we got the globe, okay, and you got the dark frequencies of fear and you're moving your way into the light as you leave the earth. Yeah. Now, that makes sense, but truth be told, the earth is in a frequency thing much bigger than just... Yeah. But when you include the physics of dark matter... I, anyways, it, 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 it explains it to perfection. This should be common sense for grade school children that says, listen, here's the way it works. Okay, this is all an illusion. You were born in... I'm your mommy because you, you know what I mean? And you can navigate these frequencies by your mind by saying, do I want to go to a frequency of joy? Cheech and Chong, boom, guaranteed. Do I want to go to a frequency of despair? Oh my God, my freaking cat died. I really loved her. I can do either through my own volition. Yeah. And uh, to, you can prove, coming back to this idea of fear versus love, you can prove you can prove that so simply because if you think about you, fear and what happens just to your body when you think about fear, everything gets small, everything gets restricted. You think about love and, and everything is expansive, isn't it? Everything opens. So it, it's just glaringly obvious. Just just model it. All you've got to do is sit there and imagine it, haven't you? What do I feel yes. like when I'm fearful? What do I feel like when I feel love? Completely. Absolutely. That's, that, that's Dalai Lama 101. Yeah. You can yeah, yeah. recognize your own emotions. That's simple common sense. I mean, I can tell you if I'm running late, I can go, I can feel it. I'm pissed. But anyways, the fact that you can recognize those emotions means you can control. Them. It's simple enlightenment. It's simply saying I'm going to be Dalai Lama and be a frequency above. Again, I like that. There's different ways to describe it. I like to say live your life one second behind reality which means you're watching it unfold. Hey, that one's angry. That one's happy. That one, and I'm happy. I'm sad, but you're watching it unfold. And then you're partaking 
Um, other one is to just be above it, be above the fray. Yeah, I get it. So again, you, that doesn't mean you're not going to get angry. It just means that you're going to understand why you got angry. Like the only times I get angry for the most part is when I can't find something. <laughs> and I'm so absent-minded that I leave shit everywhere. So I'm constantly looking for shit. And so the way I make light of that is I says, that's God's punishment for me being such a smart ass when I was a kid. He's making me look for stuff to teach me a lesson. I'm good with that. But why are no, you absent-minded? What does that mean? What? What, what, what? what is the experience of being absent-minded? What does that uh, mean? Yeah, good question. Actually, Stu, uh, again, it might be a misnomer. Because I'm certainly not absent-minded. I'm thinking. I'm just not thinking about what I'm doing at that current time. So what's the difference between my daydream, which means I'm walking through life, driving cars, putting in gas, thinking about my conversations with my therapist instead of what I should be paying attention to. What's the difference between that daydream and your night dream? Yeah. In my case, my daydream's a hell of a lot more clear. I totally spent the whole afternoon thinking about you and talking to you, but I mowed the lawn. I did whatever else my body did. I don't know what it was, including where I set my phone <laughs> and my glasses and my keys. But, but then in some ways, there's an argument to say that you're not fully embodied then because you're, in, in, you're living in your mental world. You're not, not living in, in this thing. I don't think that would be an argument. I would say there's common sense to yeah. say that's what's happening. Um, I, they use the term absent-minded, but what, what's more accurate? I mean, we'll figure it out someday, but I'm not, I'm absent-minded. Yeah, okay, my body is here, but my mind is not, it's absent. It doesn't mean it's shut down, because it's busy. No, it's some other realm. It's not paying attention to what's going on in front of me. And we all do that. That's the beauty of sometimes if you have to drive to work. 40 minutes goes by, you didn't even notice the stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's good. But yeah, so where, it's all where, so, so where are you? What what where where do you go to in your mind on things like I this? Told you that. I told you that I've been obsessing with these conversations because I don't have a you know, again, it was you you look at you were my first out of the portal, my my local box here. And that was wonderful. Okay. And so uh I forgot where we are talking about. Where does your mind go? Well, you asked me the question, and then I was thinking about, damn, am I going to go to the beach? What should I do? It's beautiful. Oh, that's right. Somebody asked me a question. What was your question again? Which? <laughs> no, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, uh, you know how people are type A and other people are freaking scatterheads. Uh, like, you could be absolutely brilliant and have very little, uh, still look like a knucklehead can't you <laughs> fumbling through life you know the uh yeah that's yeah anyways enough about me let's change the topic to you okay well is there anything else that you want to say about we're living a lucid dream okay yeah so let's recap let's just recap read through the names of them again starting with one was what was the name of that fact do you have those in front of you Right. Well, how, how we've set it out in this podcast is we're, uh, we are alive and free is number one. Okay. Number two is we will die. Okay. Um, number three is we must be free from control or, uh, sorry, coercive control. Uh -huh. Number four is we are a conscious soul, light versus darkness. And we live, and number five, which we're doing today, is we live a lucid dream, love versus fear. All right. So when I look at those first five facts, to me, it explains the, uh, the absolute uh, need to understand the difference between freedom and control. Yeah. Is the first one at the outset, saying, listen, man, there's a battle going on for this planet, physical and spiritual. We need you to understand that. Okay, second one was, what was it? Uh, we will die, informed okay. versus ignorant. Okay, so that's uh, that one there is saying, listen, you're going to die, but again, you're going to be alive. 
stop with this bullshit in terms of what ha- we don't go dark. We don't do this. We don't, we, we transfer over to the next realm and this is going to happen. So that's where that fact's important. That says, here's the terms and conditions of what happens on the other side. Make these part of your reality on this side. Okay, so the next one, I think, is saying there's a spiritual aspect. We're a conscious soul. We're a conscious soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they need to understand that. This bullshit that says uh, what Alex is so opposed to, this nonsense being spewed forth that there is no God. You're not all that bullshit goes away when we make them understand a conscious soul is the spiritual realities. They're real. You need to make a part of your life and stop being stupid about it. Yeah. Okay. Now the next one is the lucid dream. Yeah. Okay. You got a conscious soul. It's navigating energy. This is how you do it through volition, through decisions. I think just the first five. Well, yeah, let's have, I'll I'll be curious to see what a difference that makes. I believe if, 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 imagine if the whole world saw that we'd be having a different conversation. Uh, did I tell you how much I love you? Not to die. I do. This is super, super fun for me. You know why? Oh, that was another thing. Remember the smile and the smirk on on the instructions, but also that stage name. Did you see the, why I'm doing it? That says your parents named you. Now you get to name yourself only more accurately, but by using those names, it elevates us to the, the frequency of laughter. That's why my my stage name is the Slab. Yeah. Well, so what you does that mean? Them. What does that mean? The Slab. What does that mean? Well, it means because uh, I don't know if you can see this. The guy got scars and shit. I got hit yeah. by a car. Can you right. see that on my neck? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Yes, I can. Yeah, so and I was right. Yeah, and so I look at it. It's jokingly like I was in the, uh, you know, like a, a dead body, a slab with a toe, a thing on my toe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was in that state, so I, I use that. That's funny. I think that's funny because I survived it. That's it, wise ones. If you enjoyed the chat with Matt, then please like and subscribe. Fact number five, we live a lucid dream.